Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory, and today we're going to start with a little fall embroidery project that I'm super excited about. So I had a little behind the scenes technical difficulties, which is why I'm a couple minutes going live, but hopefully here we are ready to go and excited about what we're going to make today. So like I said, I'm going to do some fall embroidery and I have been working on, oh, here it is a uh, little handmade or hand-sewn linen napkin. So I cut a piece of this um, napkin or linen and then I double folded the edges and hemmed it. I don't know if you can see, but I put some pretty gold uh, fleck thread in there. So I think that's gonna be really fun um, for the project. And then I am going to add embroidery. So I was kind of playing around with like how I was gonna fold it so that I would know, you know, where the embroidery was going to show on the camera. Sorry, let me flip over here to the comments so I can see um, when you guys say hi. But so I think what I'm going to do is fold it in thirds. So I don't know if you guys have any great, I'm not like a super fancy napkin folder. And then fold this in half. And so I've put this pin here where I'm gonna put the embroidery. And then my thought is that on the table, I will tie with like a ribbon or something here about two thirds up and then have my Thanksgiving embroidery design here and some pretty ribbon or whatever here. And then I will make a set of these napkins. So that's my plan. We're gonna make the first one today and hopefully it's a success and it will look cute and then I can finish um, the rest of the set as well as sharing um, how I made um, these napkins. So I'm excited that you'll come along with me. If you don't have any um, base or are totally confused about where to start with machine embroidery, in the description of this video, I have linked to my beginner embroidery class. It's not an, it's, it's for beginners. So if you just got an embroidery machine, or a combo machine like this one, and you want to start with machine embroidery, it's a great class for you. It's under $10. It's such a steal, and you're going to want to check it out. Now, if you have played with it and are fairly confident, it is not for you, okay? So I'm going to be very transparent. It is a beginner. Take your machine out of the box. What do you need to know about machine embroidery? But you can check it out. It's also um, in the bottom of the tech or the image here and the banner if you want to check that out. So if you have questions, let me know. Um, hi to those of you rolling in. I'd love to know where you are coming in from. And two, do you have a machine embroidery? Um, do you have an embroidery machine? Okay, so that would be fun to see and hear what you're doing. I'm going to go ahead and finish getting this machine set up. So this is a combo machine, meaning I took off this bottom part right here that has that is for sewing i do need to get the embroidery foot out um and i've put on the embroidery piece right here and then i um am going to finish the transition so i'll show you how that works so you need to take off the whole foot so sometimes we just release this bottom foot right here okay so we need to take more off than that to put on this embroidery foot. And sometimes I've tightened it really well. <laughs> I've done a really good job tightening. Gosh, I was uh, super strong in my, oh, there it goes. <laughs> super strong in my tightening of that last time. Okay. Hi, Emily and Michelle. Yes. Embroidery is so much fun. And once you start playing around with it, you never want to stop. At least that's my experience. So then this other W foot, we're just going to slide right on there. I'm going to hand tighten it. I'm going to slightly tighten it with my screwdriver, but not so much that I can't get it off. Next, I'm going to take out the gold thread that I was stitching with before. I was trying to um, match as closely as I could the bobbin thread with this because you will see it on the back of the napkin a little bit. Okay. So hi, Helen. Yes. Okay. So we're going to put that yellow thread in there. 
And then um, we'll put the first color of the embroidery thread on in a minute. But um, this is my box of shame of embroidery thread because it's just one big knot. And <laughs> I don't have it um, organized. And hmm, that's, yeah, that's not great. Okay, I'm going to take off my universal needle and I'm going to use one of these embroidery needles. Give me a bit. Okay, so that's what I'm using there. Embroidery needle and put that on. So I am going to just use one of the built-in designs on the machine. So, okay, here's the little poll time. For the embroidery and for um, me working on the screen, I would have to, I can move my camera, but then I can't get myself and um, the machine in. So would you rather see the workings of the machine and how I'm doing this, or would you rather see me and explaining it? I don't really care um, what, what your choice is, um, but I probably need to choose one or the other. So <laughs> Michelle, dreaming of things to embroider. I know, so many options, so little time, and yeah, you don't even have like enough clothes to fully embroider on it, do you? Okay, so move this, get that set. All right, how I do it, there's one vote for that. Okay, so I think we will move. I'm gonna go ahead and um, move this over. Hopefully we will be able to keep everything set while I just grab this real quick. Don't bump any of my oh cords. Shoot. I don't know if you guys can probably still hear me. Okay. We'll see if this flips back on. Okay. Ah, the stream didn't quit. Yay. <laughs> so um, I, I tripped my power cord. I knew moving it was, you know, a risk. Okay. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Yay. You could still hear me. I know. <laughs> That's the joy of not, I don't have my, my camera was not my sound. All right. So this will give you um, a little, and maybe I can even peek my head in here and talk a little bit as we're um, going through this. Um, but we'll try to set this up. Okay. So here is the embroidery machine. I'm going to use one of the designs that's built in. So I'm just going to push there. I've got this. I pre went through and kind of looked at what I had for um, sort of Thanksgiving -y designs. So I'm going to choose this little um, cornucopia here in the middle. And you can see here how it shows what colors I need. So the first thing I'm going to do is hoop. Um, my fabric. Okay. So again, this pin is where I want the embroidery design. The pin. And this will be the top and this is the bottom. So I'm going to try and put that on the back. And of course, I would rather do this on a flat table, but I'm trying to be able to show how to do that. Okay, so Helen, um, real quick, you can decide wherever you want the design to go on your napkin. This is what I did. I folded the napkin, and, and napkins come in all shapes and sizes, okay? I folded the napkin in thirds. Oops, now I've got the, the embroidery stuff on the back. And I thought, okay, if I do that, and then I fold it again in half, and then I'm going to put like a little tie up here, and then I'm gonna set it on the table like this. So I put a pin then where the top would be. But you, you might fold your napkin like a fan. You might fold your napkin like an accordion. Um, you might do a triangle if you fold it into a swan, right? There's gonna be a different part of the napkin exposed. So I would first decide how you wanna fold your napkin and then I would put a pin like I did, and, and I can you know rearrange how I fold it a little bit depending on where my design comes out, but that is what I did. Super unscientific, 
um, but it worked for me. Okay, so now we're gonna take the hoop and it goes in the machine like this. So we're going to put it here and I really should be doing this on a, um, like a flat surface, like a counter, but I don't wanna keep moving the camera around. Okay, so it's flat under there and then the arrow points up. So we're gonna line that up with the arrow up top and I'm going to press this in, okay? And then we're gonna pull it taut. You do wanna pull your fabric um, taut, but you do not wanna distort your fabric and linen can stretch a little bit. So you wanna make sure you don't stretch it out. Then I'm going, well, I might leave that pin for now. Okay, so I've tightened it down on the back. I have the stabilizer, which is going to just help my fabric to withstand all of the punches that it's gonna take as the needle goes up and down through this. We're gonna lock this in place. And now we have the napkin ready to embroider. Okay, and then you can use this for dishcloths or any um, sort of thing. So the first color that I have is sort of a brown. Okay, and guys, look at this. This is a disaster. Do you see this? It's just... So anyone who wants to volunteer and come over sometime and um, sort out sort out my embroidery thread, here is a project for someone who's inspired. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take the first color. Oh, embarrassing. Take the first color. It looks like it's going to be one that will actually maybe be very similar to what the napkin color is. So but it will be, it looks like, um, have some darker outlining on it later. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread that first color and put it through. Okay, and now we're ready to, to um, embroider, except for I want my embroidery here and my needle is back here. So that's where when I hit and choose this embroider, now I am able to move the design down and you can see my needles moving down and it's in, it's in real time. So there's arrows on the screen, left, right, up, down, and they're in the center of the design and where the center of the design is is where the needle is right now. So if I like where that is and I'm gonna go ahead and take that pin out and this whole design is supposed to take 14 minutes. Okay, so I love it. That puts the information on for you. Tells you how long each color is going to take approximately. And um, that doesn't count changing time. So it will take slightly longer than 14 minutes. And then I'm going to lower the presser foot. Okay, so then your embroidery arrow turns green and you're ready to go. And now we hit start. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and while this is embroidering, I am going to get the next color ready. Okay, so it looks, it's you got a dark brown. It gives you the numbers right on there. Sometimes I use the exact numbers and sometimes, uh-oh. Um, sometimes I don't. It broke the top thread, which I'm not quite sure why. So when that happens, I usually go back 10 stitches about to have it redo those stitches. If it happens again, I will be changing out my needle because sometimes that is an issue. Okay, so we'll see. So you get some troubleshooting along the way as we go. So um, could be a bobbin issue, you know, so many things. Sometimes it gets stuck up here and then it breaks because um, it's not coming off the spool fast enough. So it could be any number of things that would cause that to break. It looks actually right now like it's getting caught up in the... under there. Okay, we are going to pull this off. And I'm going to rethread the bobbin because something something is not right. 
and I don't want it to be a bigger jam. So let's see what could be happening. I'm actually gonna rethread the top and bottom. I'm just gonna take this opportunity right now to do both while it's not working well to see, whoops, up, that at the top. It does feel like something is catching in That's in the right spot. It's here. It's like. Oh, haha, it is. It's caught around the spool. That's one thing. That's why it wasn't pulling. Okay. So I could feel that it wasn't feeding, right? Tension issues. So we'll see. Maybe it doesn't like the linen. I don't know. It's, I don't know. When was the last time I embroidered on linen? Never. I'm not sure. Okay. So now hopefully we have done some good troubleshooting. We're going to just keep on from where it left off. It, it didn't stop. I'm the one who stopped it. So I don't really feel like I need to back up and I don't want to go over kind of where it was all bunching up anyway. So we're going to hope that that can carry on and be better. So we'll see. Never a great start to your embroidery project if it is huh, looks better. So we'll see. Okay. So like I said, now I'm on to um, picking out some of my other colors. So next is a darker brown. Um, number 323, I'm digging through my uh, box here. Okay, so I have to store these in a drawer. I don't have space to store them not in a drawer. How can I do this so I don't end up with this big mess? So I, I'm, I'm so open to ideas and inspiration as we are embroidering this. So that I don't have this, like I've cleaned this out before and then this just comes up again. So I don't know. All right, so I'm just pulling out some of the colors that I'm gonna need here as I'm looking through my box. And sometimes I don't have every color that's needed, but you will notice that the numbers are in numerical order. So greens, like this says 515, and if I don't have 515, this one is 517. I know that's going to be really close because uh, 515 and 517 in numerical order are extremely close. So I would not think twice about using a 517 for a 515 unless you're doing something extremely specific that you want to make sure you have the exact color. Okay, Michelle, you said you have yours in net, so you put them on a spool rack. I know. I wish I had more um, spool rack room. That one, I'm a little bit out of space for that. And then um, nets might work because I really need them all to fit in this box so they can go in a drawer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So do you guys just, is it, can I get them on Amazon, like um, thread nets or... Um, what should I look for when I'm going to purchase that? Tips are helpful. All right, so we're switching to the next color. So, you know, this is a single needle embroidery machine. Um, so you have to actually manually thread the machine between each color. It's not a multi-needle, which those are amazing and beautiful, but... Um, beyond what I need for embroidery. Okay, then we lower the presser foot again and get started. Sometimes when there's these long tails from a new color, I just go ahead and snip it. Cotton real nets. Okay, I'm going to look for that because, yes, I could, 
I can pay one of my kids to go through this crazy box over here and um, put nets around, clip all those crazy cords, and hopefully it would be make a big difference on um, the nonsense I have going on on there. So, okay, I'm excited about that. I did not know, um, I think they're called real nets. Like, are they made for fishing? Is that what they're made for? Um, I need to figure out exactly what, yeah, what the term is that I'm using. All right, so we've just added a little shading. Mine is like a plastic box. <laughs> oh, okay, tool for cotton reels. I don't know what a cotton reel is. Is that a term that I'm not familiar with here in the U.S. maybe? I don't know. I know this box is a huge mess. And of course, they all came like really pretty and individually wrapped. And then, you know, this is four years later from this large. I've only filled in colors. I haven't bought like another big set since I made the original purchase. Because how much of each color do you actually use? Not that much. And so I have a big mess. It's totally embarrassing in my otherwise mostly organized thing. Okay, real or school nets. Okay, I'm gonna look on Amazon or eBay and see if I can find something like that. I'm totally gonna do that. Um, and then I'm gonna see if I can get someone to organize this box for me, <laughs> one of my kids. Maybe I'll do it while I'm watching TV one night. I don't know. Ah, what a mess. Okay, so what I love here on the screen, and I know it's a little bit hard for you to see, is here it shows the whole picture. Okay, so it shows the whole design. It shows where the needle is on the design, so it's constantly moving. And then up here it shows just the one color that it is currently um, embroidering. So I have this brownish on there and it's doing sort of this outline of the basket. And so that is all I can see up there. So it's sort of giving me each of those um, parts as it's embroidering. So I really, especially if you're changing out colors, you know exactly what is it embroidering? What's it gonna look like? What is the color that you need to put on? Okay, so, and like I said at the beginning, I know uh, maybe not all of you were there, but I have a, oh, Helen, you're amazing. Okay, I'm gonna try and check that out. Um, that will at least get me started for what I'm looking for. Thank you, thank you, I'm so excited. Um, I have a beginner embroidery class, obviously does not include thread organization because I'm no expert, <laughs> but I do have a beginner embroidery class on how to get started, how to use stabilizer, how to hoop your fabric, some tips for hooping the fabric, how to use and import embroidery machine or embroidery designs from both your computer, transferring them over, and then also using the internal files. All of those things are included and it's made for beginners who are really just getting started with machine embroidery. So if that's you and you wanna check that out, the link is in the description of this video. It's also um, across the bottom of the screen here. Okay, and so you can check that out, and if that interests you, interests you, it's a digital course with um, videos and step-by-step -step instructions, and of course, it's self-paced, and you have access um, for, I say, lifetime. But you know, if if um, you live longer than me, probably won't be lifetime, but for a long time. You will have access to the course for a long time. I'm not taking down my um, class portal anytime soon. So years and years, you have access for one low price. So check it out or recommend it to someone you know who is looking to tiptoe into machine embroidery. And it gives you all the supplies and things that you need to go ahead and get that started. So you can check that out. And let's keep going with the next color. So I like to over here have my next couple of colors lined up and ready to go. Okay, so I've got these organized and um, so next is going to be a dark green and then a light green and then 
I need to get 209 orange. So I had, I, you know, sorted out some colors and then I went back to embroidery and then I can do out some colors. And oh, this one is too cut up. I'm gonna have to cut it. It's part of the mess. Also, it looks like this one might have a knot in it. Maybe it came out. Okay. And some of these colors are going to go really, really fast. All right. We're, so that one is already done. We're on to the next. And now we're on to the green. It's really taking shape. I think you can see a little bit on the screen how it's looking, but I love the magic of embroidery coming together. And actually, if my kids are home when I'm doing this, they will just sit and stare at the needle. It is truly mesmerizing and better than TV sometimes. And they'll just sit and watch and you can, you know, see the design come together as you're watching. So fun. And like I said, I did try to match the bobbin thread with the color of the napkin so that for the most part, you don't see it on the back. But of course, you will see that. Helen, thank you for another um, link. I'm totally going to check it out and um, see what's next on there. Okay, so I'm going through and getting out my colors and trying to pull some of these threads out of the large mass mess that is in the middle. I can't even see the bottom colors because I've got such a mess going. 208, that's exactly what I need. Okay, so this is a new one. I've never opened 208 before. We're gonna open it now. And then the, usually the thread is like tucked under for the new one. So you have to kind of pull it out and get that ready to go. Okay. So I'm just lining these colors up. A lot of these last colors are just one minute embroidery things. So it's really quickly moving along and, oh, it wrapped around up here again. I don't love these um, embroidery things with the tiny tops, this, this spool shape does not go great. Okay, so we're gonna close that. Like I said, I'm gonna go back 10 stitches because chances are those last 10 stitches, it wasn't doing a good job. It was pulling it really too tight. And um, so one thing that I sometimes do if it keeps getting caught like that around there is I will actually take this spool and I will flip it around so that when it's coming off, it doesn't get caught up there in the top. Okay, so I like to do that if I'm having trouble. I'm just gonna go back another 10. I'm just afraid it um, was getting really tight and not doing a good job there with the stitching out. Okay, so now we'll keep stitching that out. Yeah, I don't have... Um, do you mean like this that goes in this pool? Michelle, is this what you're like, you're talking about? This one is green that like goes in the hole. I don't know if I have, I have some that are in these threads, but I don't have the other pieces, but just flip it around. It works great. And we are embroidering the little leaves on here. And then we're going on to the light green. And then looks like the last two colors I need are a purple, some purple colors. So there's some grapes in this design. Maybe I won't put all of these back now that I've pulled them out. <laughs> and then, um, oh, then I'll be ready to net them. If I can get those coming, oh, I'll leave them just like wrapped up on the, on the counter and then they won't have a chance to get all messed up again. Oh, 
All right, so I don't love all the needle threading, but generally I can just, you know, stick my head right in there. I'm trying not to stick my head right in there because then you guys can't see anything, but if I can put my face right in there, it's not such a big deal. Okay. Going through on the lighter green, then let's see, we have these two oranges, then I have the first purple, then I need the second purple. Okay, get my purples out. All right, so now, ooh, the pumpkin. This is uh, making a pretty harvest scene. So I get my um, embroidery files off many different places. We can talk about that while this is embroidering. Um, I use the built-in ones on this machine, and I have a smaller embroidery machine that has some built-in um, files as well. It only has a four by four hoop, so which this design of course could be done on a smaller hoop. Um, and so I use the built-in designs of the machine. I also use um, Etsy. I, I buy a lot of designs off Etsy. Just make sure that they're the right file for whatever type machine you have. So for other machines take the PES file. So I, would you the, use those, but different machines will take a different kind of embroidery file. So make sure you're doing that. And then I also will use the brother site iBroidery, which is um, perfect too. Thanks, Michelle. I'll check that out and see what you got, what that looks like. Hi, Francie from Michigan. Glad you're saying hi. We're talking about machine embroidery today and um, looking at making a napkin that you guys actually, this is turning out really beautiful, even for the little, our little issues at the beginning, whatever the thread issue was, we got it sorted out and now it's looking really great. Okay, so I'm actually to the end. I can see the last um, color on my machine. So that means we are almost, um, to the end. And um, so we just have four more colors after this one, and then the design will be finished. So we'll check that out and see what it looks like. Okay, so each one we're changing out. This is a new one, so got to punch through. One thing I don't love about this particular brand of thread, which I don't even know what brand it was, is I'll show you here in a minute, but the um, number is on the end that you have to break through. So unless you remove that sticker, sometimes it's hard to see what the color number is after you've used it once because you can see that I punched through the hole. So, whereas like on this one, you can still, um, the number is still available on there and not right where it was in the, hole, in the middle. So, just different designs um, uh, and different thread companies, but something to look for if you really care about getting exact color numbers. I will admit I'm a, generally an estimator if I look a little bit and I can't find the exact color, I give up really quickly. Probably also because this is my organization. <laughs> kind of hard to see numbers when you just have a big pile. Um, I'm not very inspired to be exact when that is what I'm dealing with. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I don't always worry so much about getting the exact color. But if you do and want specific colors, then, then don't buy the kind that you have to punch where the number is because then you either have to remove the sticker 
or store it. Yay, yes, it is a great, this would be such a fun way to add something handmade to your Thanksgiving table. And I do not host Thanksgiving, but I often will give like gifts at Thanksgiving. So making your own towels like this is also a great way. Like you could wrap bread in it or ooh, pumpkin bread wrapped in a Thanksgiving embroidered towel. That is inspiring. I might have to do that. Okay, so lots of things you can do with handmade towels. This is organic linen, so I um, will put food on it. I've made bread bags out of this linen, so it's like a bag and it has a cinch tie and you can put a loaf of bread in there, cinch it up and then give it as a gift. And it just makes the bread more than just a loaf of bread. It actually makes the gift, I feel like, when you sort of add that extra detail. So you could do the same with these napkins or you could make them a little bit larger and call them towels. It's really a napkin, a towel. There's not like a big difference here. Um, it's more just the shape that you're using. So you could use this idea to make linen towels, linen napkins. You can use a different kind of fabric if you want, but this linen is beautiful and i oh i'm trying to think where i got it some wholesale fabric online site if you search bread bags if you're interested in this exact fabric search bread bags on life so savory and i am 99 percent sure i put the link on there for it Oh, that's a great idea. Yes, you could refold for like multiple holidays. I love that. I am planning to not put the same embroidery design on each napkin. Like I'm hoping that I can find multiple Thanksgiving designs that all coordinate so that I can make like a set of napkins that each one is a little bit of a different design, but that um, they all look nice together. And then of course you use the same colors in your embroidery thread so that it looks perfect. Okay, we're down to the final color. And then you guys will, I will show you how we take off the, the backing, the stabilizer, and fold the napkin so you can see the final result. We are down to two minutes of embroidery, it says. It's gonna outline this pumpkin and add some vines on here for the final step. All right, and then of course, wait a second. Maybe it's going. It looked like it was making a mess of the thread, but maybe it is. We also will need to clip the extra um, threads. So we have um, a clean slate, so we'll do that. We'll take off the backing, we'll fold the napkin and check it out. And I'm super excited to show you the close up of how this looks because it is looking so, so cute. So the reveal is just around the corner. Um, and I'm excited about this embroidery project. I also have to try and think about how to show you the embroidery. I don't know. What I really need is two cameras. <laughs> so I don't think my other camera can, maybe it has the same capability. I don't know. I don't know. Video, same video capability. This is the good one that we're using here. And actually, even at the top, it tells you how many stitches it's done and how many stitches have to go. So out of 7,190 stitches, we're on 6,900. And it is got down to the final few stitches. And it 
I think this is kind of the perfect size too on this napkin. It's not too big of a design. It really is just enough so that you have a design on there, but not too big that it's going to be like a big, hard embroidery patch. So pretty excited about checking it out and getting it folded up and see what it looks like. I have to find some really pretty ribbon or maybe I'll get some like jute or something rustic to tie around the napkin and um, to sort of cinch that together like I was showing. So we'll see what it looks like here in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and lift up that and pull out my um, hoop. It should be all cut. Oh, the back is actually not too bad color-wise. I think it's going to actually blend in pretty well. Look at how pretty that turned out. Isn't that so nice? I'm super excited about that. So I like to take my little embroidery clipper scissors while it's still pulled tight on the hoop because i find that it's these little threads just sort of stick up and out while it's pulled taut and is pretty easy for me to clip i have a, a pair of these that are curved these are not the curved ones i don't know where those are floating around somewhere but they're sharp and pointy and look good all right here is the up close one more time. Really pretty, huh? And these colors I find go really well with this natural linen look. So I think this is tear away. I tested it before I put it on. I have it on a spool. Oh yeah, it's gonna tear right away. So I wanted to have tear away so that it was easy to take off. You can also like water soluble, but I don't really wanna wash these because I had to do a lot of, quite a lot of pressing to get these napkins this, because linen is so wrinkly. So to get it to lay flat, I had to do quite a bit of pressing. So I'd rather not wash and have to press it again because this is the back of the napkin that someone might turn over and see, but hopefully they won't. I am going to clip the threads on the back as well. Depending on if I'm sewing or covering it up, I don't always clip the threads on the back because sometimes no one's gonna see them. Okay, so not a perfect match, but you can see that the bobbin thread generally blends in pretty well on the back. There's the design out of the hoop. And let's once again fold the napkin. So what I said was I was going to fold it in thirds. Okay, so fold the napkin in thirds and then fold that in half. And then I have this design centered on the bottom here. And my plan is to about here, put a pretty bow with um, some natural looking ribbon or twine. I don't know, I have, probably have to go um, to the store and figure out what I'm gonna look like. And then I'll set it on the table like this. This design will be up here. We can maybe have the ribbons coming down and it will look really pretty and finished. So. Let me lay this out here on the table so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so doesn't that look so, will look so pretty next to a table setting? So you just have this laid out, have this, you could even spread this out more if you wanted or just leave it in this bunch. But there you go. And it's a real usable napkin because it's made with linen fabric and I just bought, you could buy napkins and add embroidery. What an easy way to add a custom look. You can also, I just bought some yardage of this linen. And like I said, I just did a double hem, folded it, I pressed it and then I pressed it again. And then I sewed um, the hem here. So I have just a nice finished edge on the napkin and then I folded it how I wanted to fold it, and then I marked it with the pin, and then I put the embroidery in that spot. And so when I folded it again the same way, the embroidery was right where I wanted it. So I feel like that is a pretty 
easy and simple way to get your embroidery right where you want it and in a placement how you will use it. So there are so many ways to fold napkins. I don't even know all of them, but I love it. And I feel like this turned out so cute. So again, I'm gonna make a whole set of them with different embroideries using the same colors so that it all goes together in the end. And my friends, I'm gonna organize this box. I'm gonna try to get some of these nets and get this organized while I'm working on this embroidery project. I am inspired. So, yay. Thank you for inspiring me to um, clean up my mess. Let me just raise this up a little bit. And um, anyway, so, yeah, still not high enough. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna be working on. Thanksgiving napkins, Thanksgiving napkins, and organizing this terribly embarrassing box of embroidery thread. How about you? What are you gonna be working on? You guys know what I'm gonna be busy with. I'm gonna like right now order those nets if I can find them on a source for the US. And then as soon as they come, I'm gonna be organizing that box. So I hope you have some exciting projects ahead too. Like what could be more exciting than organizing this box of thread? Um, but find something exciting, work on it. This is definitely much more inspiring to me than the box of thread. So I will be way more excited about finishing this project than I am about this project, but they both are needed. So have a great rest of your week. I am so excited that you joined me for today's, um, embroidery project and I hope to see you around soon. Bye.